All right, elastic, elasticity of demand. Um, you might have heard this if you've taken any business um, classes in the past. Um, it's a term, well, let's look at what it says here. Um, mathematically, it's a, the elasticity of demand, and I'm going to rewrite that. Um, I don't really like the way they have it. They've got it in, I guess, Leibniz notation. Um, but for our purposes, let's just say the elasticity of demand with respect to x is going to be the absolute value of x times d prime of x over d of x, where d is the um, demand function. So hopefully you can read my d there. A little sloppy. All right. So, um, basically, basically, we want to look at elasticity to know if we should raise prices, lower prices, or keep them the same. Um, so we use math, and, and in particular, we use calculus to find that out. Um, so if it if e is less than one, like after we compute this thing in the absolute value, if it's less than one, the demand is inelastic. In this case, raising prices will increase revenue. That's good. If E is greater than 1, uh, then demand is elastic. In this case, raising prices decreases revenue. So probably not what we want to do. And if E is exactly 1, then we say demand is unitary. At equals 1, equals 1 at critical points of the revenue function. And... Um, Interpretation of elasticity, if the price increases by 1%, the demand will increase by E%. Percent. So, let's do an example. We have, given a demand function, we want to find the elasticity of demand at a price of $45. And then we need to determine if it's elastic, inelastic, or, and also should prices be raised. So we need a couple things. Um, so remember our function, in this case it's going to be e of p for elasticity is the absolute value of p times um, d prime of p all over d of p. So we should find what d prime of p is. Well, if we wrote that function, made it a little more derivative friendly, it would be 375 minus 4p all to the 1 half power. So taking the derivative of that with the chain rule, I'd get 1 half times 375 minus 4p to the negative 1 half power times negative 4. And simplifying that a bit, we get negative 2 times 375 minus 4p to the negative 1 half. So there's our derivative, and we want to go ahead and put uh, 45 into that, because we're looking at a price of $45. And if you compute this correctly in your um, calculator, you should come up with about negative 0.14322. Alright, we also need what d of 45 is. So that's plugging into the original function, 375 minus 4 times 45. And that value is, so let me see if I can find it, 13.96. So putting it all together, E of P, the elasticity of demand, is going to be 45 times the negative 0.14322 all over 13.96. And calculating that, we get point, remember you're taking the absolute value, so we're going to get positive, 0.4617. And that is less than 1. 
So if we go back up, if E is less than 1, it's inelastic. Raising prices increases revenue. So in other words, let me squish things up here. It's inelastic. And we should raise prices. Okay. All right. So D of P is negative 2P plus 246. P is 94. Find the elasticity of demand. Is the demand elastic, inelastic, or unitary? Should prices be raised? Explain. Well, let's start by figuring out some things. We need D prime of P, so that's just going to be negative 2. And no matter what you plug into that function, so in this case it's 94, we're going to get negative 2. D of 94 is equal to negative 2 times 94 plus 246. And we get 58 for that. So finding E of P, or E of 94, I should say, is the absolute value of 94 times negative 2 all over 58. Punch that in the calculator, take the absolute value, and we get 3.241. This is definitely greater than 1. So that means that this one is elastic, and Should lower prices because um, raising prices decreases revenue. All right. Oh, my revenue thing got chopped off there, but raising prices decreases revenue. And I think we answered everything. Let's go back and check. Prices be raised. Okay, no. Prices should not be raised. And we've explained why.